on the line we have uh, Catherine Newell. Catherine, good morning. Good morning, Dermot. Good morning. Lovely to, su- to speak to you. Uh, you're a single mother with two extraordinary children. Your oldest, your oldest is Anusha, who's uh, 16, and your youngest, Axel, is 14, and uh, he has severe autism and ADH- ADHD. Uh, and you've written extensively blogging your journey of trying to understand your son's needs whilst caring for yourself and your daughter. Yeah, welcome. Thank you for joining us on the program this morning. Thank you, pleasure. Yeah, I'd like to start by asking you, could you tell us something about your family and, and how autism came to be a part of it? So I was um, in London and enjoying uh, the privileges of uh, enjoying a really lovely life in London and was fortunate to meet my husband, my then husband, uh, and start a family. And uh, it was joyous. I had, I had my firstborn, Anusha, Uh, a more beautiful baby I couldn't wish for and then I had my son and we moved home um, and it was amazing but I knew pretty early like six weeks when eye contact is supposed to start to settle uh, it didn't come and so from about eight weeks I started to feel very very uneasy but I had no name for it there was no disability uh, in my family maybe a pair of glasses um, but I, but I had no expectation or, or understanding of this thing. I, I didn't really know what autism was or heard of it. Um, and it took two years, two long years uh, of thinking that my son really, really did not like me. Uh, and if I tried, as I was encouraged to, to play with him to try and bring his language on because he wasn't developing, uh, if I tried to interact or play or touch his toys, he would literally uh, smash his head uh, on the closest hard surface. Uh, so he ended up very bruised, uh, and my heart was very bruised, I, and I would just retreat, and uh, I was just bewildered. But the thing was, you know, we, we as parents really wanted to think that there was something wrong with me and my parenting. Um, it was far too painful and unbelievable to think there could be anything wrong with our beautiful son. Um, and thankfully, eventually, somebody um, sort of hinted at it. And, I, and, 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 and that's when the penny dropped, that there was nothing wrong with me, that sadly there was something going on with him. And autism, I think, is, is, is very peculiar in that way. It, it's, it seeps into your landscape uh, in a very quiet, mysterious way. Did you have any understanding of autism before that? I, th- I think I'd seen Rain Man years before. And, I mean, the you know, Dustin Hoffman, and yeah. That was autism, but, you know, that, that was probably it. Mm-hmm. Unless, conception about people so rain man is is obviously about a man with you know particular mathematical genius and that sort of um, idea still is quite prevalent and people sort of asking me you know so what's his skills what's his speciality what's his savant? and you know and obviously there is as many i think there's as many savant autists as there are savant neurotypicals so you know. savant is a, a savant um, a savant you know a, a somebody who's a genius at something Yes, yeah. And I, I guess, there, you know, from my perception, is there a spectrum? Is there, are there different uh, degrees? And I, I use my words carefully here because I'm not making comparisons. So, uh, but is, could you just explain to us the different types of, of um, autism that there are? Well, so, so autism is, uh, it, it, to, in order to have a diagnosis of autism, you need to um, have... Uh, it's called a triad of impairments. So there's sort of three areas in which there are impairments. And it's a really around sort of social communication. It's about stuff that we do uh, to be together. So it, it could be around language, and Axel does not speak. So, so he, doesn't, he doesn't speak at all? Speaking, no. He's right. a very vocal young man. <laughs> Believe you me, you'll know when he, he's, he's in the He spot. makes sounds or he makes noises. He makes very uh, remarkable noises. Uh, uh, So it's very much in the chest. It's a sound around there. He is trying to make some uh, sounds, but I actually think it's painful for him. It's very difficult for him to use his tongue and his vocal cords in the way we do. So it can be that uh, language is not there, or that if it is, it'll be very literal. It can be disordered. Uh, things like innuendos, jokes, all that sarcasm and so on, it can be very tricky. Um, so he, d- he would understand something but, but like that, but he, uh, he doesn't quite comprehend the, the joke or the... 
the but purpose of it. So, you know, raining cats and dogs, or I was in a right to an eight, or, um, you know, I, I, there was a story in my talk, which is about a little girl who was told to get lost by the other kids in the playground. And so that's what she was doing. She was found by police many miles away from school, um, trying to meet the instruction. Mm. And when he makes those sounds, do you uh, understand, understand, is there a meaning behind it for him when he makes different sounds that he does he want something or he doesn't want something? Sometimes it's about a blocking out. It's a bit like my teenage daughter. She'll put her Beats headphones on and block the world out. He's making his sounds. He's blocking the world out. Other times it's a joyous thing. It's like he's singing. Other times it is a communication. And there is a sort of telepathy between me and him. I mean, he understands an increasing amount of the things that I'm saying. I speak to him in a very particular way. Uh, so his what's called receptive language is really improving, very exciting. But his expressive language, his ability to speak is, is very, very limited. But it doesn't mean that we don't understand each other. And I'm really struck that our guts and our hearts and our, our smell and our sense of each other, I think is a lot more accurate than the stuff that can come out of our mouths. And I really quite love the space in which I, I, I have with my son, where almost I read the sheen of sweat on his forehead, or the look of his eye, the tone of his sounds, uh, his proximity to me. You know, I really do read him, and I'm sure he's reading us um, in, in actually a far more sophisticated uh, mm -hmm. sort of tools. So uh, bring, sorry, pl please continue. Is, is learning to, to love and live and communicate with him. It's, it's been a wonderful training. Mm. Well, I asked you for some, we play some music during the, the program and I'd asked you for some tracks and the uh, first one I'm going to play is, is Woods. Yes. Uh, just tell us a little bit about that because it's a special track. It's gorgeous. It's uh, written by Millie Watts uh, and her band or the band she's in. Um, and she wrote this song. She used to work with Axel in the care home And, and it's called In the Woods with Axel. And it's really just about that. It's about the experience of going with a, a, an individual like Axel who really lives in the present. Mm, that's played. The past, etc. And if you allow yourself to join him there, it's a beautiful, it's like a meditation. And it's about going to the woods and going up in a tree and just being there. And there's this beautiful uh, lyric she says, um, let me just see, it's there. Um, it's something like, you know, the sun, the sun stayed bright and shone in my eyes and the things that had troubled me drifted away to the skies. That's and that is something, if you, you take the time to be with him and join him in his world, it, it's a very beautiful space he lives. He's a very pure human being. Uh, he, he's not troubled by the shoulds and the woods and there's something about his honesty that I find so refreshing. Mm, let's listen to Woods. Thank you. Come on, I'll give you a toy You can't trust the weather here Put on a coat to be sure We plotted a path In this wild little corner of trees Leaves now surround us And woods are as far as my eyes can see Up in the branches I'll find what I'm looking for You help pull me up as we distance And 
I held up my word to the light as it started to dim. Up in the branches, I'll find what I'm looking for. You help pull me up as we distance ourselves from the floor. A place to rest my legs, our lungs for themselves with the air. You talk about things of which neither of us really care. But the sun stay bright. Stay bright. It shone in my eyes, and the things that had troubled me drifted away to the sky. Uh, Woods, uh, Millie Watts is the artist. Yeah. So th- I just uh, thank you so much for uh, outlining for us just at the beginning of your journey, and and uh, I'd like to explore with you the the um, the impact that it's had for you. Uh, Malcolm was talking earlier about an encounter that he had, and not knowing what to do, not knowing what to do. Um, could you ch- just share with us your experience of how that's when when that happens or has happened for you with um, Axel? Um, what what the impact that that's had on you? It's been huge. I mean, from from the beginning, of course, it was diagnosis and millions of therapies and um, therapy in the home and uh, enormous. Uh, but there is this issue of you know that's your internal world when you're out in the world. And sometimes, really, I have to sort of armor up and dig deep and breathe to go out um, because it can. You know, everyone knows we're coming down the road. We are so noisy. It's gonna. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like the circus has come to town. Um, and, you know, I, I mean, yes, Malcolm was talking about uh, supermarkets, and I'm very grateful that I have wonderful relationships now with the supermarkets I use, and the staff there have been truly wonderful. Um, but, but the staff and, and some t- staff, and sometimes a lot of the public can be very challenging. Um, sometimes, Axel, bless him, he, he's, he's having a bad day, uh, and although he's, you know, a striking and tall young man now, um, I may still put him in a trolley if that is going to keep him with me keep him safe i've lost him eight times needing police and helicopters to get him back so when he runs if he slips out uh, he's gone um so sometimes i still do put him in a trolley and uh, of course it looks strange this beautiful perfectly great looking young man in a trolley with me you know what am i doing um, and they will come striding over and say you know do you know what you're doing uh, and i've rehearsed many times to say things like um, not really and uh, <laughs> yeah. tell me tell me what you think I should be doing with him <laughs> yeah and it's, 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 I mean usually they've turned on their heel before I can start to sort of say well listen this, this is the gig you know um, and, and actually I've, I've really come to love those people because uh, you know I mean I've, I've had the police called on my house three times because of the noise emanating from it and actually I would much rather somebody came over because they were concerned about my boy and talk to me or ring the police because they're concerned about the noises coming from my house than just let it be you know these people care now it might not be in these examples I mean I had one chap bless him it was a really hot day and Axel very wisely was lying on the uh, floor of the supermarket because the tiles were nice and cold on his face Totally made sense. Yeah. The man coming down with a trolley literally said, um, if you don't move, I'm going to run over your head. And it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> so, you know, people can be, uh, and I have sadly got a, a, quite a, a, a sort of list of examples, people can be really challenged, really upset, really rude. Um, and I, as I say, I do have a, a, a sort of a whole smorgasbord of ways in which I respond um, mm. reasonably. Um, but you know, I, I do wish you know. So people aware. would need. Sorry, people would come up to you. So what would the advice you would give is is for someone to come up and 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 say something to you? 
to uh, to get an explanation as to what is happening. Anxious thing, isn't it, to go and comment on a parent's parenting? Um, so you know, it takes quite a lot to come. But there's something about you know, and, I, and as I say, I feel like things have improved hugely. Um, just you know, if you see something, take a moment. And, you know, you might think, oh, that's ridiculous, I need to go and say something, or that's, what, that's disgusting, was said to us a number of times. Um, I'm, I'm going to go and comment. Um, but you just take a, take a moment, just check what is the situation here. Uh, just recently, Axel really kicked off. Um, I wouldn't let him have another bar, his favourite bar, and um, he really kicked off big time. Uh, and I was so touched, a complete stranger came over and said, uh, can I help? And I looked at them and I thought, well, they must be involved in, like, care work or something. I said, do you know what this is? And he said, no, I just thought you might need some help. How adorable. Yeah, yeah. You know, just adorable. Just how can I help or can I help? Yeah. Do you need anything? Yeah. You know, I've I've been lying by the frozen pea section with Axel having a a, a relax. (laughs) Is that what you call it, a relax? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Or, or, uh, Or, in fact, bless them, we were in a department store and Axel went and dived into this completely completely white bed uh, and I was trying to look casual with him he had such mm. a muddy that day of course and you know again uh, members of the public coming over and just saying do you need anything and I said yeah could you get me a trolley and so that was another example of um, using the trolley so yeah. you know the impact has been huge as I say lots of therapies lots of um, strange incidents but also the isolation that can come with a with a child that finds society so hard so it means that we don't go to the parties and we don't go for Christmas and we don't go on holiday and we don't have people round. But, I mean, this has been changing recently. He's 14 now and he has changed immeasurably since we changed his diet. We discovered eventually, having tried a million things, uh, that he's horrendously allergic to a vast range of foods, gluten, dairy, soy, peanut, all those things. We stripped them out of his diet and he is so much better. He was on some really ugly medications before and really struggling. Now he's on a decent diet, no medications, really, really mm. not. So where did you learn that, Catherine? I and mean, was that uh, self-taught or was that advice freely available to you from medical I got to the point where he, they, it was almost like, you know, they were just trying to hit him with one medication after another. It was, it, was, it was kind of like, I don't know, just, it was like an experiment, just trying to chuck all these drugs into him. And so he was on medication to sleep, medication to manage his psychotic episodes. Managing his vomiting, his his reflux, uh, managing his eczema, managing his uh, asthma, you know, so he was just being medicated. And I just got to a point where I just went, enough! So how have you shared that with other people? Really? How How have you shared your knowledge, your learning, uh, with other There's people? With two it? roots, um, as you can tell, I'm quite verbal. I, um, I, uh, I do have the talk that I think you referred to, so yeah, online, on good. YouTube... There is Catherine Newell on autism. It's a lovely talk called You Can Talk. I did that a long time ago, and it's you know it's quite young, and obviously things have changed a lot since then. Uh, so the other presence I have is Catherine Newell and autism, and natty titles I use, uh, Catherine Newell and autism on Facebook, and it is wonderful. I started in 2012, around the time that I was looking for a school, a residential school or a care home for him because things were so dire. And here I am in 2017 celebrating. He does live away from home far more than I'm happy with, but it has to be like this. Was there a turning point where that you had to reach that decision? Hideous. Uh, in fact, I wrote about it recently, so if you go on there, you can, uh, you can read that history. But, yeah, basically he was about seven, and his behaviour was off the chart. And the independent reviewing officer who assesses children for care... Eventually, I think she was about, he was about eight, and she looked me in the eye and said, you need to tell us when we take him in. Wow, that's some, that must have been... Yeah. A, 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 an unfathomable thing to, to, to consider, and it took me two more years of very little sleep, an awful lot of violence, before I got to the point where I really recognised. My carers were quitting working with us because they were getting too maimed. They were going to hospital, they were getting bitten on the breast. It was really getting nasty and um so basically i mean in the care home there's a 32 staff team and that's what he needed and has he been um ha- happy there has it has it has he yeah. i mean you know it, it was a strange adjustment um obviously for all of us uh, uh and as i wrote you know nothing prepares you for packing your young son's clothes for a care home 
not going on the school trip. They're not going off to uni. No, it, it's a it's a very hard decision to make, uh, and yeah, mm. a, a, a very difficult time of my life. Uh, that was three, four years ago now, and so we're in this lovely routine where you know he's he comes home Monday to Wednesday, and I get to love and enjoy him and do our crazy stuff, uh, and then very importantly, I then get time for my daughter because she was really knocked out the park in terms of attention. I couldn't read books to her at bedtime. I couldn't help her in the mornings because I had this firework to deal with. Um, and so it was very important to be part of that decision-making was I really need to give her some time before she's gone. Mm. And so my week is Axel on a Monday, Tuesday, uh, seeing my daughter and, and getting back to that thing called work. I, was, I loved my work. I was a designer maker before. Uh, and then after this experience, uh, it changed me a lot. Mm. And, and, and I'm grateful to be back to work, which is, uh, to answer your question, Malcolm, around um, I run parent support groups for parents of disabled children, which is one of the, uh, it's something I desperately needed for myself, who's caring for the carers. And so uh, it's a really beautiful, uh, mm. funded by my son's school. And uh, it, some real magic happens in there. And what a beautiful bunch of people mm. we're going to hear like to hear more about that when uh, we're just going to play uh, the next track that you've chosen and i think it's 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 very uh, significant because the, in the sense when i was uh, thinking about you in the supermarket it's about calming axel down it's about calming everything down so that you can quiet it and and uh, bring some calm and peace and this yeah. is a uh, bridge over troubled waters thank you the very powerful Simon and Garfunkel's Bridge Over Troubled Waters. Mm. And Catherine, you, uh, you were saying there that you had a, a connection with uh, Bridge Over Troubled Waters. For sure. I mean, Malcolm uh, mentioned one of the quotes in the talk, which is, you know, will you, uh, what is it, will you love me when I least deserve it? Because um, that's when I really need it. When I really need it. When I really need it, yeah. Um, and... Uh, you know, Axel is a remarkable human. He's here. He doesn't have language. He, you know, there's things that are... And I think he's absolutely incredible, and I'm humbled by his, his determination and, and uh, incredible, uh, clever ways in which he negotiates the terrain um, in his own ways. But there are times where he, he does get so angry, anxious, and frustrated um, that he, he really will lash out, and he will damage himself, bite himself, uh, I'm amazed if he hasn't broken bones the way he hits the walls. Um, but he will also uh, really bite and uh, scratch uh, whatever flesh is nearby. And so, so the, the lesson I really feel like Axel's taught me, in spades, unfortunately, is is to love even when it's really hard. And I've always, I got to the place of whenever he was biting into me uh, and the training is that you push your flesh into his mouth you don't pull away because it'll nip and break so you're pushing my arm into his mouth and i would just have a little mantra from marshall rosenberg saying you know every act of violence is a suicidal expression of an unmet need and i would just be thinking you know i love my son what is it that he's needing to bring him back to his calm, peaceful, beautiful self because he doesn't mean to do this. This is a suicidal expression of his unmet need. And so to just really stay with him uh, and soothe him and stroke him and sing to him and bring him back, you know, and my goodness, wouldn't I like to be treated that way when I'm, I mean, I don't go around biting people, but um, when I'm, I'm not quite myself. Um, so, you know, really amazing uh, lesson in love um, and I, I, I mean, I am. I'm really grateful to him. I mean, he's. Uh, I don't do design work and so on anymore. Uh, I am working with parents and support groups, and I love writing. So please do uh, uh, check that out. Um, and uh, giving workshops. So I, I give a remarkable workshop. So whether it's talking and speaking about autism and the journey, I've been booked for annual, annual general meetings and so on. I've recently received a award from a local charity, which I'm very very pleased about and um, I do um, workshops on sex and sexuality which is really important uh, that we are teaching sex and sexuality to our people with uh, maybe uh, learning learning difficulties or autism or whatever it's a different terrain and it needs to be um, taught sensitively and, 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 and properly and well 
Um, so, it, it, you know, it's been a, an amazing training in, in what does it mean to really love. It's, been an, it's, it's opened up my life to an incredible bunch of people and carers and experiences and work. Um, but at the end of the day, the thing I'm really pleased about, the other day, you know, I, I, in the beginning, in the early days, I used to think I hate autism. It's really cost me so much. And I've really traveled a long way to a place of actually feeling so privileged have Axel as my son. That's quite a journey, isn't it? Uh, uh, of of from that pl from one place to the other, and and also to to the place of love, which is where most of us want to be. And and mm -hmm. but he's lovely, and it, I think I think one of the major changes, and it was partly to do with him going in the care home, and I actually got some sleep and could kind of recover and and bring myself back into the the fray. Um, but what I got is that so much of his young life, we'd been trying to fix him and cure him and bully him into being like us. Uh, and and, I, and I, there was a lovely uh, quote by Ellen Knockbaum, who she says, um, um, I heard someone saying how it was very hard to communicate with a child with autism. And I said, have you any idea how hard she's finding it to communicate with you? And I, and I really have got that, you know, the arrogance of the neurotypicals, um, you know, trying to train these, these poor individuals to, uh, to be like us. And, and I got into a place of going, actually, yeah, I get it in terms of, you know, having a home and self-care skills and so on. That, that is important. But he's a remarkable, extraordinary human being. Uh, and the day I sort of shifted my focus from trying to drag him to me and went and sat next to him uh, was a good day. And I admire him for his uh, honesty I just he is so free he is not condoned or cordoned by um, social conditioning uh, and I so enjoy uh, and I sometimes wonder what would we be like if we weren't obeying and crimping ourselves to keep our heads below the parapet and fit in Axel doesn't care he'll go to the supermarket and if he feels like skipping by the peas and going me uh, he will and I really admire him <laughs> if he wants if he's had enough of you he'll very very gently, come and get you by the hand, take you to the door, <laughs> bring you outside and shut the door. No malice, just really just straight playfulness. Forward. That's enough. Yeah. And equally, if he does come and sit on your lap, which is still quite a new thing, it's like, I don't know, my synapses go all over the place. It is quite, wow. you know, uh, uh, emotional uh, and quite an incredible experience. Uh, so I do. I just. I love his honesty. I love watching him. I love the way he does things. And I, as I say, it makes me wonder what would I be doing uh, if I wasn't so uh, paid up to this. I, th I think you summed it up really well at the end of your uh, the video pod that I saw yeah. when you said that uh, I saw the angel in the marble and I carved until I let it free. Yeah. Although I've come to change, see, that was my attitude before, like, I'm Michelangelo, he's stuck in the marble and I'm revealing him. Actually, the, 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 that's something of the arrogance I was talking about, and I've, I love that quote, but I actually think uh, he, he's an angel and he's bouncing around quite free enough, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, it was almost like I was trying to stick him in the marble. Yeah. Right. Position him to walk properly, mm. speak properly, when actually... He's, he's really lovely, just wow. as he is. Catherine, thank you. You're, I can tell you that uh, Malcolm and I are smiling from ear to ear. This <laughs> we are so just uh, reveling in uh, in the uh, the story and the wonder and the joy and the love that uh, you are bringing to this conversation and to this this uh, topic. Um, and it's it's been really uh, a pleasure um, to have you on the program and listening to you this morning. Um, you've mentioned a number of things. Um, You've got talks and uh, you've got uh, workshops and that. So if people wanted to get in contact with you, I'll get more information, get in touch with you, or uh, get a, a read those blogs that you've written. Um, how would they go about that? If you want to see the talk, it's on YouTube and it's called You Can Talk. Uh, and, uh, and it is under Catherine, with a C, Newell, N-E-W-E-L-L, -L, uh, on autism. And so that's uh, a talk. It's uh, I think I did it in 2012. That's on YouTube. That's on YouTube. Uh, Facebook is lovely. I, I really enjoy speaking out there. In the early days, I was very isolated, children in bed, no one to talk to, couldn't invite anyone around. And I started sort of almost communicating out from uh, that place. Uh, so that's Catherine Newell and autism 
on Facebook. And it's a gorgeous, I, I love it. There's I mean, about 2,600 of us on there. And I write about whatever comes through me. And uh, it's really lovely, the interactions from uh, the people reading and comments and so on. So it's, it's a lot of lovely photos and texture. Uh, have a look. It's, it's really nice. So, And if you wanted to get in touch with me, um, I do give talks. Sometimes they're 10 minutes long. Sometimes I get booked for an hour. Um, so I, I give talks um, just about life and loving an Axel. Um, and workshops are, are more around, as I say, sex and sexuality, which I'm very passionate about. Axel's 14, need I say more? Mm. And you might think, well, why, why do you need to do that? And, you know, young people, girls and boys, are hurting themselves in their... Uh, lack of knowledge, you know, in, in, in this situation, you know, may not be able to talk to a friend, may not be able to access the internet or look at books. Uh, and so, you know, and to do with sensory issues uh, may be getting into a pickle. So uh, I've devised a uh, workshop which uh, I, I um, go and give. Mm. Catherine, I want to acknowledge you and I want to honour you and celebrate you. Uh, I find that uh, what you're doing is absolutely incredibly important and you're doing it with such love and some, some compassion uh, that it's, I really just want to, to say just a whole and, and uh, acknowledgement and honour. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining us on the programme this morning. And uh, look, f yeah. so, go ahead. Just to say thank you. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you and Malcolm. Thank you for, for inviting me. And uh, we're going to play out uh, this session with... Um, so it's, it's Mozart's the Piano Sonata number 16 in C major because you sent me a video clip of... Uh, is that on your Facebook uh, page? It is, yeah. And it was so wonderful to see him uh, dancing around the, the room uh, listening to this. Uh, he's very interested, I believe, in, cl in classical music. So thank you so much and Lovely, thank you. have a wonderful weekend. Thank Thanks, you. Catherine.